Screen Actors. Today's video is all about shooting movies during COVID. And back by popular demand to talk to you about this is my dear friend and wonderful actor, Tony Napo. He is working right now on at least two projects, one for television and one a feature film. And he is going to share with you exactly what's going on because of COVID and how the actor's world has changed. As you know, I don't like to bring you stuff here that's theory. I want to give you real world experiences that you can learn from and then apply to your work and to your career. So by the way, if you haven't been here before, definitely click subscribe and give the channel and the video a thumbs up. And now let's get right into it with Tony Napo. So here we are again with Tony Napo. No place I'd rather be <laughs> than with LDB. Oh, hey, that even has poetry. A little bit. A little Not bit. bad. And uh, we're lucky, guys, because Tony is not only an experienced actor, but here we are. This is November 2020. Yeah. We're in the midst of COVID, and he is working a lot right now. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to share with you what life on a set is like in the COVID world. So yeah. you're working on a series right now called... I'm working on a series called Lady Dicks, and I, and I worked on a couple of other series. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm working on a series. <laughs> that was Siri. That was Siri, and Siri interrupted us. And we're gonna <laughs> Siri, what the? That, that was amazing. I'm going to shut this phone down altogether. I'm going to keep rolling, guys, because yeah. I think it's funny, but... I want you to know that I actually had the sound off on my phone. <laughs> you know what I think? Is? <coughs> Siri is one of your fans. They're always listening. I'm telling you. Yeah. And you know what, what's funny is I had my phone turned off on a. Uh, <laughs> I was doing a film in Italy with with Joey Pants, Joe Pantliano, and um, and my phone was off. But for some reason, I touched it and it did that beep beep sound. Right. In the middle of a take. Oh my God! And uh, Joe played through, and then at the end of the take, they called cut, and he goes, "What? What do you even have a phone for? Nobody likes you." <laughs> you just did his voice nicely, man. That's too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. That's Joey. He's Pants. a fun guy. He's a fun guy. Um, okay, okay so, so we're going to COVID Town. Um, COVID Town. So the first thing you get to Joe, so we're talking about the series. Uh, Lady Dix. Lady Dix, I'm on. I've done a couple of other series. I did a film called The Boathouse in Sudbury. And I'm going to do a film called uh, The Last Mark in Sudbury again in a, in a couple of weeks. The Last Mark? What is that? Gang? Mob, mob thing, yeah. Yeah. Ah, cool. When um, does that start? Uh, October, no. It's November, right? November uh, something, 18, 19, somewhere in there. Nice. What are you playing? Uh, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> You're getting these young actors really great. <laughs> Let's get back to COVID. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you get your first call for costume fitting yeah you get called for a costume fitting you you have to do a covid test you know i've done i think i've done 10 covid tests now maybe more and uh thankfully now in the beginning you had to go line up with the hospital and get a covid test and it wasn't so bad in the beginning it was you know an hour maybe in and out uh but then over time it built up to two three four eight hours and now they don't test at hospitals anymore uh, unless you have symptoms. So most production companies have either set you up with a private test or they have an in-house uh, medic doing that kind of stuff. Uh, so you have to go do a test before you even go in for wardrobe. Before you go into the building, you have to do a test and wait two days and get the results or whatever it is. 
and then go to your wardrobe and you go to your wardrobe fitting and you have to wear a mask and you have to social distance, you know, the same way, the same thing you have to do everywhere else, which I don't mind doing, but it's just an added layer of stuff you have to do. Uh, what about trying on clothes? Is that, do you have any issues around that? No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't have any issues, and I don't. Th it hasn't really come up. I think you know if if the building is if nobody's tested positive in the building, then it's very unlikely that anything has been contaminated. And even if something is contaminated, it only stays contaminated for four hours or eight hours or whatever oh. it is. whatever it is. It's it doesn't stay contaminated forever. So. Um, and I think, I'm not sure about materials versus like a wooden top or a metal top, but anyway, um, you t touch as little stuff, as, you know, it's like I take the subway all the time. Just try not to touch anything. I'm very aware of not touching stuff. Okay. So now you've done the costume fitting, and let's say you're not going to shoot for the next, until three days from now. Right. Do you have to take another COVID test before you go to set? It depends, but yeah, maybe, maybe. You can't get tested often enough. You know, the thing of a test is I could get tested and then contract it on my way home. Uh, so what I've done, you know, part of, I think, what you have to do now as a human being, but definitely as an actor, is just not do anything. You know, I don't go to bars. I don't go to parties. I don't. I don't socialize almost at all. I mean, there's a pandemic happening. I come here because I know you're safe and and I and I have gone, you know, I've gone to a handful of places uh, where people I know are are also safe and, and negative. But, uh, you know, you don't want to run the risk of, of contracting something because not only will you lose the job, but you're going to shut down that whole set for two weeks if, if you come up positive and and they discover the positive uh, after you've actually been on set and, right. and uh, interacted with a lot of people. But it's a requirement here, isn't it, for, for the production? that, Like, you can you choose, you're going to shoot, let's say you do a costume fitting Monday, yeah. you're going to shoot Thursday, can you choose not to have that second COVID test? I don't not? think so, no. No. You have to have if they tell you they need it, they need it. Okay. Usually, and, but usually you don't get the results till the next day. Or the day after that, two days. Um, so, yeah, you're just. Uh, I'm just being tested all. I was tested this morning, as I told you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and then you just after you get tested, you got to make sure you you take care of yourself and and protect yourself. So now, you often are driven to set. Has that experience changed driving to set? Um, well, I'm, I've, both times I've gone to Sudbury now, they've given me a rental car because that's the safest way to get there, uh -huh. is to be isolated. Um, you know, I'm, the drivers are all tested, but especially when you're working in a, a place like Sudbury, they might not all be professional drivers or full-time drivers. It could be a fireman who's moonlighting as a driver or, or somebody's cousin. or so you, know, you don't know who they are. Here in town, people who are full-time drivers... Uh, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna play around, um, but there's no there's no shuttles there's no groups of people in vans which there used to be, right. uh, and the driver is wearing a mask and I'm wearing a mask and I'm in the back and he's in the front and you know it's a, you're a bit, you're a little bit like a cargo you know being transported so it's one driver and one actor one driver one actor that's it Fantastic. even on set like i was on jason Priestley's show recently and uh he, jason Priestley's not i mean he's a super nice guy but they won't let him get in a car with anyone else but his driver right because you got to protect the show if he gets sick the show goes down for two weeks you know at least depending on how sick he gets no, uh, so that's thinking. that's a that's very different now. Transportation is different. What about eating life is on different? The set? Yeah, the life on the set because you know we've all been on the set before and it was kind of relaxed and very uh, yeah, very social. Very, very social. Now, how has that changed? It's not so social. <laughs> <laughs> um, you still shoot the shit with people. Yeah. I, thankfully, I smoke, 
So I get to take my mask down to smoke and then put it back up. Um, people tend to be doing their jobs. You know, the crew now, like say the camera crew, for example, they're doing their job and they're sterilizing everything in between. The makeup and hair people, you come and sit in a chair and get your stuff done. When you leave, now they've got to sterilize all the stuff you've touched before the next person comes in. So the crew, I find, bears the brunt of it. Um, but that cuts down on, and it makes the day a bit longer, and it makes everyone a bit more tired. And, and so really the focus has to be on doing your work versus, hey, we're, we're having fun here and doing a little bit of work in between. It's like, it's all work now. What about eating? How has that changed? There's an app where you order your lunch before you get to set. Um, there is even an app, I think, where you can order, because usually there's a craft service truck, is what it's called, the people who supply the food for the production. And most of the time, when I'm not shooting, I would be on the truck, mm -hmm. eating. <laughs> uh, and I love that, you know, just all day long. You get a sandwich, you get some soup, you get some chips. I'm, uh, some actors go to the gym, I go to the craft truck. Um, I, uh, I've always liked that. So that component of it no longer exists. You can get a snack, you can get food, but you have to go and ask for it and order it and make sure it's safe. You order your lunch ahead of time. They used to have you know, a hot lunch every day. Yeah, great and lunch. they usually have options. So I would take like a steak and some ribs and some chicken and some, I would take like eight lunches and eat most of it. And, uh, and now it's like you get one lunch, which is probably better for me, but, uh, <laughs> but way less fun. Uh, and even like the cutlery is all disposable or I've been on sets where the first day they give you a pencil case it's got a fork a knife and a spoon in it metal and that's yours and if you lose it you better get another one because that's your that's your little kit for the okay. for the duration now actual shooting there are scenes when actors you know in the scene are supposed to be very close to each other i haven't been in a scene where i've been 6 feet apart from somebody ever i don't think uh, not if you're in the same scene. Uh, so, you know, that's why the testing is so important and that's why taking care of yourself is so important because you are exposed to whoever you're in the scene with. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you need to be exposed to the crew members. Like, there's hundreds of people on a set sometimes. Um, but there's no way around being exposed to an actor you're in a scene mm -hmm. with. I had a friend who was on a... A movie where they, they built a, they built a thing because they had to kiss the actors, the female and male actor, and so they built a rig which is like an arm that had a piece of plastic, so that the actors you know you couldn't see it and the actors would kiss with the plastic in between them, which seems ridiculous when you consider. They've done 80 other scenes where they're talking this close to each other. But everyone's trying their best. Mm -hmm. Everyone's doing the best they can. Um, I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot and it makes the day go slower and it makes people... I mean, people I think now are getting a little more used to it. Mm -hmm. But out of the gate... You know, nobody wants to lose their job. Nobody wants to make anyone else lose their job. Uh, and nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to live through COVID. So it's super, uh, it can be super touchy. And, 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 you know, they have, the last set I was just on, uh, they have COVID cops. Really? <laughs> That's what we call them. And uh, so as soon as they call cut, Tony, get your mask on. And I'm like, I just give me give me 20 seconds to because I forgot every time. And on that one, we were wearing shields, so the clear shield uh, because uh, 
so it won't affect your makeup when you put a mask on. Mm -hmm. But the clear shields, I could not get out of here. I got him. What was that? It's kind of a bug. No, well, let it be. Let it be. Okay. Oh, it's a ladybug. I'm glad I didn't oh, kill so it. Oh, so you don't want to hurt yeah. a ladybug. Um, I, uh, I kept forgetting that the mask was on. So like three or four times a day, every day, I would try to smoke a cigarette <laughs> through a piece of plastic or put my coffee and spill my coffee. Like Anything you could put in your mouth, I tried to put through a plastic mask. Um, but also, I just forgot if it was there or not because I wear glasses. So I'm always used to something being in my mm -hmm. way. And uh, they would say, put your mask on. And so after a while, I just like, because, you know, but, but cutting out, you could do, you can do 30, 40, 50 takes in a day. That's 30, 40, 50 times that mask comes on and off. What about trailers and honey wagons now? And how have they changed? I don't think they've changed a whole lot. I, I, I don't think wardrobe people actually come into the trailer anymore. I've been on one set where you actually had to go get your own wardrobe and bring it back to your trailer. Uh-huh. Um, but nobody enters your trailer now at all. Uh, if the wardrobe is there in the morning, it's there. But nobody comes in, nobody goes out. And again, as long as those are cleaned, sterilized the night before, you're safe. Like, I don't, I'm not worried about touching anything in there because of somebody the day before. Because if it was, as long as it was sterilized overnight, it's, it's going to be safe. What about background performers? Are there less of them now? Sometimes there's less of them. And I'll tell you, this is, this is a hard, this is hard for background performers. Because if you're working on three shows, that's three COVID tests. Mm. And a COVID test, a COVID test pays you the same as a wardrobe call. Oh, really? So it's like a two-hour call. Wow. But for actors, that's a couple of hundred bucks. For background, that's 60 bucks. So that means a background person is losing a day's pay to make 60 bucks so that they can work the next day. But if you're going to work three days, you've lost three days' pay to work three days. But also, where do they stay on the set? Because usually it's a holding yeah. uh, center where everybody stays. Yeah, There's, the Lady Dicks has built like booths for them, individual wow. booths for them to be in. Often they were just throwing them outside in a tent or something, like a wide open tent with chairs spread out. But, you know, we're in November in Canada, so that's no longer... Well, today is a nice day, but generally yeah. speaking, that's not an option. Right. You have to provide them with a, with a space. Um, it's not easy. You know, I have a friend who does background, and uh, she has to pack up, you know, her wardrobe, because they bring their own wardrobe. Then she has to pack up her water and snacks and food for the day, because there's no craft table for them. Uh, and... And yeah, it's just like she's like she's going camping every time she goes out. Wow. Yeah. How about directors? Are directors wearing masks a lot? Directors are wearing masks. Everybody's wearing masks. I mean, there's, nobody gets a pass. You know, even uh, like I said, Jason Priestley's a, a legitimate star. He's got his mask on every time they call a cut because it's not about whether he's happy or not. It's about being safe. Have you spoken to actors you know in the States, like in LA, and do they say it's the same there or different? Nobody tells me they're working there. I, I haven't heard that a whole lot of work is happening right now. Oh, I see. So a lot of LA actors, are here. Canadians at least, are here. Are here. Yeah. This is going to sound like a weird question, but is there anything about this situation working that you might prefer to before? It doesn't have to be. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't. I don't prefer it because I really like the social component of yeah. uh, work for me is social time. Of course. You know, I'm seeing, you know, I've been working with crew members or actors for 30 years. So I might not have seen you for a decade. I'd be like, hey, Lewis, how are you, man? And we sit down and have a yeah, chat. Yeah. And while we're chatting, someone's yelling, hey, get spread out, spread out. You know, hey, Lewis, how, how's your... You know, <laughs> how's your personal details? We shouldn't be yelling. <laughs> <laughs>
totally unrelated to COVID. Yeah. One short story about a star that you worked with, which was a really great experience for you. Um, I, you know, I was mentioned Joey Pants already. Oh, you know what? Early on, I did a, a terrible kind of straight to video movie that no one will ever see with Dennis Hopper. I worked a few times with Dennis Hopper, oh. but this was the first time I worked with him. And uh, here's two funny stories. Can I tell two stories? Sure. Yeah, he has, a, he has a guy, or he's passed on now, so he doesn't have a guy, but he had a guy who would sit by the monitors and watch the performances in a chair. And this guy had a, like a ducktail hairdo and a Hawaiian shirt on, and he just silently sat there. Never said a word to anybody. And then every once in a while, I only saw it happen once, He'd get out of the chair after a take, and he'd slowly walk over to Dennis Hopper, and he'd go like this. Really? And then he'd walk back to his chair, and Dennis Hopper would go, <laughs> He said it stinks. We got to go again. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, because who's going to tell Dennis Hopper he stinks? Except his friend, right? <laughs> Anyway, so we finished this film, and it was, it was my last day, and I went over to him, and I said, I, I, and we'd had a few chats. We talked about James Dean, it's very cool stuff. And uh, I shook his hand, I said, I just, I just want to say what an honor it was to work with you, sir. And he's like, ah, is it your last day, man? Come on, let's take a walk. I'll walk you back to your trailer. And my trailer at the time was like, you know, a little, a little shoebox. And, uh, we, and he'd walk me back and sh shot the shit for like 10 minutes and uh, said, what do you got coming up and what are you doing? And I asked him, what are you doing? What are you doing? And at the end of it, he said, you're a good actor, man. Enjoy the ride. And, you know, that's just like, and after the fact, I thought, oh, he's probably done that a bunch of times to people, mm -hmm. but. But he didn't have to. No. You know, to that's me, great. that was the great, that's, that's the great story. thing. It was like, yeah. I was really like, and so I try to, you know, and I've had a few good experiences like that where people were, were very supportive and encouraging when I was younger. And so when I see somebody I like, I always make a point of telling them how much I admire what they're doing or how great I think they were make sure they know how to get in touch with me, if there's anything I can ever do to help uh, in any way, advice, doesn't matter. Always feel free to, uh, to get in touch with me. And you know, that's like, observing other actors is a great way to learn a lot about, not just acting, but how to conduct yourself as an actor, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Somebody like Dennis Hopper shows up and is a great guy that's a great experience for everyone. Yeah. Somebody shows up who's difficult and moody and, you know, a pain in the ass, that's a long movie to be working on for, every, for everyone. Yeah. I won't say any names, but just because I fear lawsuits. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know what? I gotta say, in my experience, Oh, 98% of the people totally. Fabulous people. Totally, totally. I agree. Once in a while, a jerk. But even Only then, once in a while. And then I haven't had any personal problems in, in my career at all with anybody. I, I haven't had any huge problems, but I've, I've definitely worked with people I thought, mm -hmm. well, that's disappointing. No, I don't. I don't. You know, people who you think are going to be no. great, fun people. And you're like, eh. We're not going to end this on a negative note. <laughs> Ice cream, <laughs> hockey. <laughs> A big thank you again to Tony Napo for sharing his heart, his knowledge, his humor, his everything. Love this guy. He is an entertaining truth teller. One of the few people I know who can talk to you about really bad shit and make you laugh. So please, Share in the comments below your biggest takeaway from this video. Get a conversation going that will enlighten and enrich, you know, everybody in our acting community. 
If you haven't done so already, definitely click subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Check below in the description for the link to the site where you can learn about my latest online course, Self Taping Mastery. Just check it out, see what I'm offering, and if it's not for you, hey, that's okay. If it is for you, that's great. We'll get to know each other better and be able to grow our careers together and maybe even eventually work on the same movie or television project together. Until the next time, always feel it, say it, mean it, and book it.